welcome to the March meeting of the Southampton Village Planning Board. If everybody could silence their cell phones, I'd appreciate it. If I could get a motion to open the meeting, I'd appreciate it. So moved. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, we've got a couple of extensions, which we talked about at the work session, and uh, Bo had hoped to uh, do the paperwork that was required to get these things moving along, but was not able to do that. So, Steve, I think what we want to do is, at the request of the applicant, make motions to adjourn both of these, correct? So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye, and that's the OIA Associates, 239 Windmill Lane, and the Harkonnen and Atreides, 408 First Neck Lane. Uh, the public meeting for 550 and 554 Hill Street was scheduled for this evening. We've received a uh, letter from the applicant's attorney, Mr. Flanagan, that in view of the fact that uh, Mr. Robinson's not going to be here tonight, and due to the complexity of the issues involved with this application, the applicant has requested uh, that we adjourn further discussion to the work session of March 27th. So if I could have a motion to do that. Make a motion at the request of the applicant to adjourn for all purposes the 550-554 Hill Street application until the March 27th work session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the next item in public meeting section is Beechwood Lodge, 101-109 Hill Street. This is a public hearing on the draft environmental impact statement. Uh, I'd like uh, the applicant to make a brief presentation of what is involved here. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll be brief. I'm just going to run through the process for you, and then I'll ask Gail Pesner, who's the primary author of that document you have in front of you, to come up and just do a quick outline of it. Um, this process began when the, um, and actually Stephen Dubb from VHB, VHB, from Beachwood is here, and between us, I think we have some other people from VHB, so we can answer any questions that you do have. Everybody here? Charlie, it's a little bit quiet to me. Could you turn it up a little bit? Thank you. This process began when the owner of the property, uh, Beachwood, made application to the Zoning Board of Appeals to change the use in the property from one non-conforming use to another. As you know, it's the village latch in. So it was to change the latch or the in use to a multifamily 24 unit condo facility. Uh, we made the application to the zoning board. They took jurisdiction and then immediately referred it to this board to perform the secret analysis. Um, this uh, project was classified as a type one action based solely on the fact that it was in a historic district. Had it not been in a historic district, I surmise that this would have been an unlisted action and the review or the scrutiny that it was put under by this board um, would be less. That being the case, a final scope uh, for the study was approved by this board in September of 2016. Uh, we submitted the um, draft environmental impact statement and on January 3rd, you deemed it complete. We are looking uh, to come through this process and get a negative declaration that there won't be a negative impact on the environment. Um, if we're so lucky as to have that happen, we have to go back to the zoning board for the change of the non-conforming use. If we're successful there, we have to come back to this board um, for site plan approval. It, it's a quirk in the uh, procedural uh, system here that the initial board that we had to make application to was the zoning board, but they're not the one performing the secret. So the application that we put into you was a site plan application. The, the site plan that we submitted is purely conceptual. Um, it, it, was, it was something that we were able to put to paper so that you could have jurisdiction over this case. But like I said, we have to come back um, in the future to get site plan approval if we're able to successfully get through um, the rest of the process. Um, 
I say that because I don't, um, it would be unfortunate for, in this part of the process to dig too deeply into the site plan. This is about tonight whether we're going to have a negative impact on the environment. Um, I'll ask uh, Gail Pesner from VHB to come up, and like I said, she's the uh, main author of this document. She's going to run through the, the highlights of it very quickly, and then we're here just to take public comment. And any questions, again, we can answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Good evening, Chairman Stevenson and members of the board. My name is Gail Pesner. Um, I'm senior project manager at VHB with offices at 100 Motor Parkway in Hopog. And as uh, Mr. Colmartin said, we prepared the draft environmental impact statement or DEIS. And tonight is all about listening to comments, your comments, comments from the public. Um, just wanted to clarify one thing. Um, as Mr. Gilmartin said, we are in a historic district at the property, and um, the project contemplates refurbishing the Latch Inn and the Terry Cottage for use as condominium units. And we've been working closely with the Office of uh, Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation, the state office, um, as well as the Village Board of Historic Preservation and Architectural Review um, on, on the refurbishment and what we're doing within the historic district. Um, Based on the formal scoping process, the village issued a final scope which outlined the topics that we were to study in the DEIS. And uh, let me go over the following because it's, uh, it's a large list. Uh, the DEIS looked at soils and topography, surface and groundwater resources, flora and fauna, including a tree survey. Um, aesthetic resources, including visual resources, lighting and landscaping. Cultural resources, as I mentioned, since we are in the historic district. Land use and zoning. Transportation. Utilities and site infrastructure. Community facilities, including schools, emergency services, and solid waste. Socioeconomic and fiscal impacts. Construction impacts green building and sustainability, and energy use. Um, so the village and its consultant reviewed the DEIS and, as Mr. Gilmartin said, deemed it complete in January and scheduled this public hearing to review the substance of the DEIS. Again, we're here to listen to comments. And uh, also wanted to mention that there is a comment period that needs to be set um, seeker calls for a minimum of 10 days after the close of the comment period that the comment, uh, I'm sorry, the close of the public hearing that the comment period is extended to. So again, that's, that's your call, but it's a minimum of 10 days uh, after the close. So we're here to listen and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a few notes about this process for, for the
to talk to me a little bit about that. And well, it's a conceptual site plan. Um, I think what you have before you in the plan and as we've laid it out in the uh, DEIS is something that you can count on that if we're able to get through the rest of the process and come back to you, that it's going to be for a 24 unit uh, multifamily that includes the retention of the um, of the village latch building and the Terry Cottage. Where they're located on site and, and how that <coughs> comes about is still um, left to an application to the zoning board. Because uh, it depends what they're going to grant you. Correct, correct. But but I, I was here for that, that other discussion and I can tell you that, um, you know, generally what you see on that site plan is what you're going to get. Now again, I can't comment on that and, and ultimately I don't think you want to comment on that because you're going to want to have a public hearing on the site plan and go through that process in more detail. We have, um, you know, I think it's premature to discuss the site plan, but I think this board can rest assured that it's, we're going to come back to you with at maximum a 24 um, unit multifamily with the retention of those two buildings. Thank you. And your protection, Mr. Chairman, is that you will have carved out in your findings thresholds based on this conceptual site plan. If, in fact, the plan is modified and exceeds any of those thresholds, they'd have to come back and modify the secret approval. So um, it is in the applicant's interest to make sure the plan that evolves is consistent with your findings and what we're evaluating today. It didn't further? seem, uh, just, just one last comment, it didn't seem like any of the comments were substantive and I think we can deal with them quickly. So we'd ask you to close the public hearing. Um, it was our two neighbors mm -hmm. um, on either side who appeared who I think have the greatest interest mm -hmm. here um, and have a 10 day written comment here. I could just ask the lady. Uh, the neighbor to the east um, at 91 Hill Street. Th this is the site plan that I have here. I, I may be coming in in the eighth inning, but if in fact we have a 2.7 foot setback, not a 30 foot minimum setback, I, I just don't know at this point. Is there a sanitary, is there a septic system in here? Is there a small package plant? I mean, I would really like to know before the comment period what the answers to these questions are. Is there any information that you could provide to the neighbor? Is there a site that I could look at to be sure that I understand? So that I'd like to have the time to submit some comments. There, there is a complete copy, which is this thing, of the plans in the planning board office. I don't know if you had a chance to see that, but this I, is- I haven't. I, I was just received notice of this meeting, um, but okay. I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> You've got a period of time now of at least 10 days, and if you have more, let me know, but to okay. go look at it, and, and you can make your comments in writing, uh, you know, to this board, and they will be entered into the uh, the requirements that the EIS must address. That's correct. Okay. That's and just so you're not overwhelmed, there's an executive summary in here. Also. I'll read the whole thing. Thank you. It's important to us. Thank you very much. And they have to go to health department and get an approval by health department anyway. So there's this. They're going to have an approved system at some point. So. So, hello, board members. Are you comfortable with closing this portion of the public hearing? When we when we deal with uh, this, well, those just get into just the record. The record. Right. They're, they're for the they, these go into the record. And just to be clear, for for the record, the way the process will work is all of the comments that are delivered either tonight verbally in writing by myself, by the public, or the involved agencies. Every one of those comments gets answered in the document known as the final environmental impact statement in writing, in detail, to your satisfaction. So all of those comments get an answer, a written answer, and an answer that you will be satisfied with. I'm okay with it. That's fine. No, and as far as the, the public comment after this date, uh, two weeks, is two weeks acceptable? I, I don't detect a lot of public comment except from the neighbors. Um, 
So if we were to um, posit that everything's got to be received into the planning board office, is, is that okay? Do you get two weeks? No? Okay. So let's have motions to close the public meeting and also to limit the time for a further comment to two weeks, if we could do that. Uh, make a motion to close the public hearing on Beachwood Latch and have a 14-day written comment period attached to it after today. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay, the third item in the public meeting section is 191 Bishop's Lane. Thanks, Patrick. Take care. Thank you. For which a negative deck was adopted in at the previous uh, at the January meeting. And for the applicant, David Gilmartin Jr. Farrell Fritz, 50 Station Road, Watermill. Um, at the last public hearing, um, I think we were ready to close, except that two neighbors came forward and had some issues with a separate project. Um, I think the, the board rightfully said um, that you need to deal with that outside this process, but we, we have dealt with it, I believe, to the satisfaction of the people that were complaining, and I think we're ready to move forward on this application. Uh, and we have nothing in the record that the neighbors submitted on this application, so I'm confident that that is up. And is anybody here to speak about this application? No. Okay. So we should close this public hearing as well? Yes. Make a motion to close the public hearing on 191 Bishop's Lane, George Benedict. Have a second? Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the next step on this is to um, to identify it as a minor subdivision, and um, I guess at the next meeting we would want to have something in writing um, that identifies this as the sketch plan approval and um, as a minor subdivision, and whether or not they should go directly to final, which I would recommend. So I'll talk to Beryl, I guess. Yeah. And doesn't the applicant have to take some steps to? Execute those actions. They'll have to go to the health department, right. for instance. Yeah, but they've done everything else. They went to the uh, zoning board and got relief for the lot wet. So pretty much that's the only thing they need to do is go through the health department. Right. Okay. Prior to our prior to our action. I have, some villages don't do a sketch plan approval, so the, the health department does see applications prior to. Right, okay. So, so they could go forward with it to the health department before the sketch plan is approved. So it shouldn't be a limiting factor for them. But the, in the past, we've had something in writing. In subdivisions, we start with 220 Hampton Road, R. John Punnett, pending review. Um, I reviewed the plan. It's identical to what was submitted in the past, and so this can be moved forward for a public hearing at the next, next month. So, uh, um.
can as soon as they can. Yeah. Okay. They seem complex, but we can schedule for April. Right, now that's fine. And these yeah. are two very small additions, as you can see. So if you can schedule it for April 3rd, that would be terrific. Okay. I make a motion at the request of the applicant. Actually, we're actually not doing that. We're going to um, make a motion to schedule a public hearing for 79 Main Street for the um, April 3rd public meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. So for 56 County Road, we did receive a letter from the building inspector regarding the um, did you issues. Take it on mine. This is, this is the boat Yeah, the yeah, so there. Car it's a corner car walk. So I have to say that I swung by there today on the way here, and um, there was no car parked in the little triangle, and there was no car parked on the lawn. Um, it was there last week. It was there last week. Oh, yeah. So um, I didn't look to see if there were cars parked in the um, in the lot to the east. Um, so that is um, you know, something that Mr. Foster believes should re be resolved. And um, it was actually something that they brought up when they subdivided the property and they identified that in the minutes, would they be able to use the property for overflow parking? And um, that was refused at that time without zoning board approval, so. But there's not a whole lot we can do besides saying don't do that. It's not really this board, yes, but yeah. Good job. yeah. So, Mr. Chu, um, don't do that anymore. If we could find a remedy, you know, maybe have some kind of remedy um, identified. Um, but otherwise, again, this is another one where everything is complete. We're ready to go for a public hearing on this as well. So, just quickly, after the work session, we did talk with Mr. Chu, and he's made arrangements to remove the uh, cars from the lot. It's not complete yet, but he's in the process. And Makes me effort. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Right. Uh, make a motion to s schedule a public hearing for 656 County Road 39A to the busy uh, April 3rd yeah. calendar. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Easy for you to say because you're not going to be there. I'm listening. I'm checking everything for people. Wait for you to come back in. All right. Uh, I think Sigma 2 at 16 Hill Street. Hi, good evening, board members. Uh, William Shapiro. Uh, I'm the attorney for the applicants here. Unfortunately, I missed the work session for this last week. Uh, I'm trying to just figure out what my clients need to do to be able to open up a restaurant there uh, at this premises. Um, Oh. I went to the uh, county and I saw that there was approval for a wet use for a 16 seat takeout back in 2014, but my clients were advised that they can't have a restaurant there. So I'm just trying to um, find out what, what the board is going to require in order for them to open this up. It, it's not really us, it's, it's uh, the health department. And it's Sony board as well. Uh, yeah, but the, well, if, he has a, if they have an approval for a 16 seat maximum, take out, they can have that. Mm -hmm. But the plan that they showed us showed cooking facilities, griddles and fryers, and, and that's a restaurant. So okay. what that approval for is for something like what we approved up on um, Hampton Road, the Starbucks, where they have prepackaged stuff. Okay. They, they can put something in a microwave and heat it, but you can't prepare any food. And that really, you, you should get that from the uh, health department direct, but, but I know that's what the rules are. I, I did speak to the health department this week, and I was provided with a food establishment plan review, which we're in the process of putting together and submitting to them. I was told by them that this is more uh, it's, it's not really a discretionary thing. It's more if we meet the requirements and they tell us to, they're going to grant it. Uh, if there's a deficiency in our application, they'll tell us, we'll fix it, and then they'll issue the approval. So if they give this approval that, that they represent it to us, they'll give us, then the board and the, the appeals board will allow this restaurant with a grill as opposed to you know the microwave. Uh 
I, I don't. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So you were talking specifically about health department. Right. Yeah. So from the, the village's perspective, mm -hmm. the as restaurant use is a special exception that is issued by the zoning board. Okay. So that has to be, this has to be referred to the zoning board. Okay. But there's one caveat also that you can't have a restaurant within 500 feet of a residential district. Mm -hmm. And um, Carver Street is residential district to the, I guess that's to the south. And, um, and that would need to be approved by the board of trustees. So those are the two actions that have to occur before the planning board can provide any kind of approval on the site plan modification. And the calculations are different for a restaurant as far as uh, for gallons per acre per day. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so. But they have, I mean, they looked at the, it would be interesting to see what the health department says because mm -hmm. they have that, we have that stamp plan that says, you know, that there would be one restaurant and there are no other restaurants in that right. strip there, so. Mm -hmm. Um, incidentally, I did look at the parking requirements, mm -hmm. and this doesn't have anywhere near the required parking spaces for the, a shopping center, but it was grandfathered okay. uh, when, when this board approved it back in 2009, I think it was. Um, but if you take a retail and you do the calculations for 1,298 square foot retail, it's 4.3333 um, spaces. Mm -hmm. And if you back it out the other way, it, for a restaurant, it would be 21 seats. So you're still within that, you know, if you stick with the health department, if you do get through okay. the 16 seats, then you're okay as far as parking goes. Okay. So if what I heard is correct, we need to go to the Board of Trustees and get the Department of Health approval? And the Zoning Board of Appeals. And the Zoning Board of Appeals. I go to health first because if they say no, you're yeah, kind of dead in the water. True. Unless unless they were talking about another option that wasn't going to have cooking facilities, a, a yogurt, would that be? Yeah. So you might want to get the other option in motion. Yeah, I think that's uh, as well. tentatively a backup plan if, if yeah. this doesn't um, come together. Uh, okay. All right, that's it. Yeah. So you'd like to adjourn until next week? Yeah, meeting? please. Make a motion at the request of the applicant to adjourn for all purposes the 16 Hill Street Sigma 2 LLC to the March 27th work session, April 3rd public hearing. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Thank you, board members. Have a good night. The, Thanks. The guy, said, the guy said a good idea. It's just to, for restaurants, yeah. there's a dilemma where, yeah. where it is. Mm -hmm. I'll ho hopefully they can you know get all this through, but not maybe well, it'll be a no, Hey. Just a, a side comment to get all those approvals in time for June. It's probably not going to happen. Yeah, that's that's what we're concerned about. Because yeah. you know, we want to be open. We're right. thinking end of they May. Told me, oh, they told us that. Yeah, no, we we yeah. think it's great. Except you've got to get through the eye of the needle uh -huh. because it's a restaurant. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Allen, 51 Pheasant Lane. We spoke about this in the work session. It's the site plan for the flag lot landscaping. Mm -hmm. And there was just a, a recommendation from Bo that we do a, a public hearing on this to, to get the we input from neighbors. We that for April, April 3rd. What? Just a public hearing. For Pheasant Lane? Yeah, flag lot. Pheasant Lane. Yeah. Oh, flag lot landscaping. In the back there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll second it. Make a motion to request the applicant to uh, actually, no. Uh, make a motion to schedule a public hearing for the 51 Pheasant Lane, Jeff Allen, to the April 3rd calendar. All in second. favor. Aye. Aye. Second. Aye. 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 April 3rd is going to be busy. I second it in advance. Okay. All right. We do need to approve some minutes. Minutes. I've seen some of them. Yep. If there's no further business, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well done.